I'm Gary. He's Travis. What? Do me off. Take it again. <laughs> Do it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is Whiskey Happens. And this is Tipping Back Tuesday. And we're tipping back some 12 year old Bib and Tuck. Um, Tucker, I always call it Tuck. Gary always is correcting me. It's just kind of my slang with it. Um, I was correcting you is so much just lost. I, 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 I'm not really familiar with this. I don't drink a bunch of Tennessee whiskey, not by like any rule. It just, people show me new stuff. I either start drinking it or I don't. That's how that goes. No, I mean, and this is a, like you said, this is a different bottle. This is a 12 year old. This is a store pick. This is um, something just unique. So I had to pick it up. Um, Bib and Tucker is um, something I don't know a whole lot about. Um, but like I said, it was a store pick. It was 12 years aged. I'm a huge age hound. I like 15 year old age bourbons and whiskeys. So um, this is pretty close to 15 years age at 12. Had to pick it up. Bib and Tucker actually was the name comes from um, like high line clothing back in the day. So back in the day, people used to say, if you're wearing really nice clothes, it was Bib and Tucker. So um, that's where the name comes from. It is a total wine store pick. uh, And I really wanted to Gary to try it. So I sent him a handshake and we're going to get into it. Uh, That was very interesting about how the name came about. I don't, I can't say I've ever heard that before. And I never even, so many bourbons are just named after people who existed. So I just assumed Bib was someone's last name. I went to a school called Tucker. So like Tucker seemed like it could have been that guy. And maybe after he was in Virginia, he went to Tennessee. Yeah. Could have been easy. Yeah. Most of their 12 year aged um, single barrels come in at 99. This one's at 102. So a little bit higher proof. So um, gives it a little bit of a different taste too. So let's try it. It'll be interesting to have a regular bottle versus the store pick. Do you think three, three, three degrees is that different though? Like, I mean, 3%. Honestly, I don't know. Like that, it intrigues me though, because um, I'm not, I'm not saying every barrel comes out at one. You said 103, 102. This is 102. Yeah. I'm not saying every barrel comes out at 102, but to proof it down to 99, like why waste the labor? If they're all like, why, why not just go barrel proof on all of them? It seems yeah. like that's, I mean, and that's just <clears throat> going with your barrel. Now, if they're having barrels come out at 144 or whatnot, maybe I need some water. <coughs> I can see why they go through it. But for 102, I, mean, I would have left it. Well, it's interesting because so there's six year that you can get in most of these stories, I think right around 96 proof, 94 proof. And then they have another one that is just Bim and Tucker that doesn't have an age statement on it. So I'm guessing it's probably a four year age bourbon uh, whiskey. And that one's even lower proof. So it's like they keep getting lower. So this is the highest proof that you could potentially get out of their lineup. And it's only because it's a total wine store pick. So super interesting. Um, that's why, like, once again, that's why I got it. Oh, let's try it. You want to go on the nose? Yep. Oh, that is, um, as you can see, I could not hide my reaction. Mm-hmm. Seems coffee-ish to me. And that's why I kind of like, ugh. not see, an I avid get, coffee drinker. No. See, and I get a lot of corn. Yeah, for sure. A lot of ethanol up front, but which, which is, in, which is interesting because it's really we just good spent color. so much time talking about this proof. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, yes, I, I get that and all as well. But it's 12 years. I mean, there's some mild oak. It's not really. It's more leathery to me than oak. Yeah, very spicy. I will say um, the color is beautiful on it, though, for a 12 year. Um, so let's get into it. Let's try it. Ooh. Uh, more tobacco. Very tobacco, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
but it's smooth. Like, um, I'm surprised. Like, so for me, not my flavor, favorite, little favorite flavor profile is that's, I think the reason I kind of stay away from Tennessee whiskey more is because it's got that real spicy, that leathery, that, um, just char to it that I'm not a huge fan of. Um, but you get that up front, but then when it settles, it's really smooth. So um, this one's really good. It's really interesting, actually. Yeah, I'm going to say I'm not a fan of the spiciness of it, for yeah. sure. Uh, that that immediately jumped out on, to me, uh, front and back. Okay. But it has a pretty good finish. Like, it's a pretty clean finish. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this experience. Yeah, And I don't know how to process it just yet. Just full transparency. Like there's something going on. It's it, There's a lot going on. And that part's exciting. That's why I'm smiling. But like, as far as like, it is 100% unique to anything I've had at this date and time. Yeah, um, try it. Do you have any water next to you? Can you put a little drop or two in it? It, ta- it changes it completely. The, the, the spice and the tannins from like all of that, you know, heavy char kind of dissipate even with just two drops. Yeah. Um, I get more of a popcorn smell now. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But the taste even changes drastically. It does. Um, temp tampers down the, the tobacco 100%. Yeah. There's more of an apple thing going on. Um, uh, salvating a little bit more now, actually, mm-hmm. which is interesting. Like I said, like I, I'm not saying I don't like this. There's just a lot going on, and it definitely deserves a revisit. Um, but the water did help. The water did help. I think that this is definitely, if I were to move forward with purchasing this, uh, a rock situation. Oh. That was I'm a just, heavy breath, sir. I, I mean, it's just, it's, it's so, I mean, if you guys have watched the channel enough to know, I, I'm, I'm pretty boxed in on what I like. Like, you know, I, I, I'll go outside here and there for certain things, but for the most part, I'm a certain type of proof. I'm a certain type of flavor profile. Not to say that I don't like other things, but it's, I don't typically go that route. I'm the more I sip this, the more I like it. And I think I agree with you. I think if I put this on ice, I don't know. I feel like it's just smooth. Like it's very, very approachable. Um, Like I said, you're not going to find this one though, guys, just to let you know, because they only made so many of them. Um, This is bottle number 92. It's 12 year aged. It's, it's out of total wine. Um, when we were in Total Wine, when Gary was here is when I actually picked it up. And yeah, this was back in July. Correct. Um, Correct. I, but to be honest with you, I never looked for uh, the six years on our shelves here at ABC stores. Yeah. I, I've never looked for the 12 year, um, mostly because I don't drink the six year. <laughs> yeah. And that's not I don't drink it because I don't drink it. It's, it's just I haven't purchased it. I've had it once in a cocktail. Uh, I, I think I was with you when I had it in a cocktail. Yeah. So there wasn't a need to be like, I need to hunt for the 12 year just yet. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, for me, the honey is actually starting to come out in it now. Um, it's a super complex whiskey um, out of Tennessee. And I don't say that much about Tennessee whiskey. Um, Gary and I tend to not, I can't really speak for you, but for me, I don't really drink a whole lot of Tennessee whiskey. I think you said that earlier. I mean, we love Chattanooga, Chattanooga, the hand by hands down. Great. I like majority of the stuff that comes out of Chattanooga. This is another one that um, is changing my mind slightly. I, I really like it. Um, I'm going to have to, uh, I want to try, I want to try the six year or the, 12, put to you this or way. the 12 year. Would you prefer this over the Clyde Mays? Clyde Mays yes. six year? Yes. Okay. Yep. That says something. I am. Um, I'm the other way. Yep. Clyde Mays is definitely um, something I've revisited 
Thanksgiving. <laughs> I was trying to think of time, but like I, I definitely got back into that bottle and I was just like, I need to pick up another one of these. Of course, you know, it won't be the exact same because it won't be the total wine bottle, but I was just in, I think, D.C. yesterday and I saw one store pick. Yeah. Um, I say I think I was in D.C. yesterday. I was in fucking D.C. yesterday. If you come and visit over the Christmas holiday, I'll give you mine. But that means you're you're May six year. Yeah, but you got to come visit. I don't, not going to say now. Not going to say yes. But I'll do my best. That's a, that's a sell. It's a sell tactic. I got to get him here. So, all right. Well, Gary, um, I think we're kind of. I think we're baffled with this one, guys. Um, yeah, I mean, you I know think what? It's just an honest opinion. It's like sometimes you just got to go back into it. I myself. And you'll see this in another video, perhaps. Uh, realize maybe I am a Wilderness Trail fan. So, like, palettes change, time change, bottles open up over time. Um, you know, seasonal changes. Time. Seasonal changes. Yeah. So, all right, take us home. Doesn't matter if you like a neat on the rocks or in a fucking Coke. Whiskey happens. Cheers. Cheers.